I'll be reading from Matthew 7 and 7. And it reads, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks on the door will be opened. Amen. Amen. May God add a, a, re, a blessing to the reason the hearers of the world. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord again. Come on and praise the Lord again. He's worthy to keep his praise. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the glory down of the same, he's worthy to be praised. He woke us up this morning. Started us on our way. Let us see another day. That's right there, that's enough to say, thank you. I'm going to go to the God and pray. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come out and give you praise, God. God, we thank you for the small things, God. The little things, God. The breath in our body. Our heartbeat, God. We thank you. God, we ask you to come in this place and just saturate this entire place with your anointing, Lord. I ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that you shake this foundation, Lord. I ask you, Heavenly Father, not just touch me, but touch everybody under this roof, oh, Heavenly Father. Bless right now, God. Bless the man that you got planted that's going to break the word, oh, Heavenly Father. I ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that he decrease and you increase in him right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give him a word from on high, God. I ask God, I beg right now, I plead on Heavenly Father that we will not go home the same way that we came. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch us right now. Touch us. From the top of our heads to the bottom of our hearts. This I ask, oh Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus' name. We all said amen. Amen. Give God a praise tonight. Come on and give God a revival praise tonight. You know, last night we talked about a spark being set last night. And there was a mighty move of God that happened on last night. God moved in a mighty way on last night. Amen. And to the point I told him, I said, we had to come back over here and bolt the chairs down because we do know the second wave is coming. Uh, but tonight we understand something. I'm, I'm so excited. I need to do a tally. I need to do a survey or census right quick to find out there's a difference. I want to find out if there's anybody tonight came wanting something. Give God some praise. That's cute. That's very cute. But I need to find out. I need to find out if there's somebody came expecting something. Yeah. Come on, don't Come on, don't don't fool me. When I see a woman in her third trimester, nobody asks her, does she want a baby? But they ask her, when are you going to have the baby? When are you expecting your baby? And when does she let them know that I'm due on a certain date? Which means she ain't got to search the calendar. She knows when something is going to happen. There's somebody showed up tonight because you expect you've been carrying around something and you're ready for God to allow this expectation to come on. I don't know about you, but you ought to give God a praise right now because you said, man, Church is coming to give us a wonderful word from the on, on high tonight. Amen. Me and Pastor Dick have been knowing each other for over 25 years. Amen. And I, we both came into the ministry at the same time at St. Paul AME Church in Macon, Georgia. And amen. We've been leaning on each other ever since. 
Uh, we went to seminary together along with me, him, and Pastor Drains, who preached last night. And while I was in seminary, I want y'all to share this, share this, that's a testimony. Uh, while I was in seminary, I had a heart attack in seminary. I had to sit out two semesters. I had to sit out two semesters. Yes, I did. Uh, but my friends continued to pray for me. And we made a pact. We made a pact. We said we were going to go in together and we were going to leave together. And I told them, I said, when I get up here, I got to take classes from the top to the bottom, from right to left. And they helped me every which way that they could because on graduation day, let me tell y'all something. I didn't want to graduate May 12, 2012. I expected to graduate to May 12, 2012. And I want y'all to understand, we went to the registrar's office together. And when I got up there, he looked at my stuff. He said, well, well doing this don't look like you're going to get out of here uh, to 2013. I said, the devil is a liar. He said, well, the only way that you're going to graduate is you got to go to the provost's office and you got to talk to him and ask him for permission to take other classes. I said, just point me to his office. See, he said, let me tell y'all something. He said, let me tell you, three other people already went and he turned them down. I said, he may have turned them down, but evidently they don't know who I know. I knocked on the provost's door. He said, come on in. And I told him, I said, listen, I got something to tell you. I need to take some extra classes. I can't get them unless you sign for them. He said, Coleman Dumas, I went to Harvard and you got the matriculate. I said, oh, that's well and good. I said, but all I need you to do is sign this paper. He said, what makes me, why should I sign this paper? I said, you don't understand. I said, I made an oath. Oh my God, I hope y'all get this. I said, I made an oath the first day that I got here that I was going to be here for three years exactly. I ain't got time for five years. I ain't got time for seven. But I made an oath not to myself, but to God and to of my friends and they already got everything they need to graduate and I just need to be a part of the part. And I prayed while he was sitting there thinking and he said well I'm going to do this for you. And he signed that paper and when I took that paper out of there I want y'all to know I don't know what you've been going through this week. I don't know how many doors have been slammed in your face. I don't care how many people got rejected before you showed up. I don't care how many people were told no before you showed up. But there's something on the inside of you that God is going to release on tonight. You are you Say, Pastor Dickey, Pastor Dickey. preach, Pastor Dickey. Preach. Let the Lord use you. Let the Lord use you. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to praise you. You want to come? The next voice you'll hear none other than Pastor Morris Dickey of St. Mark's Amy Church in Atlanta, Georgia. God bless you.
church, amen, and I was trying to find my purpose, but it just was not there at the time, mm. and you know, I was almost written off people's wheels because <laughs> I went to the AME church, but at the time where I was, that's where I was being fed, right. so guess what, once I was there and got what I needed, 
God's make me realize, amen, it's amen, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Yeah. Amen. Anybody glad to be finishing, amen, it's yeah. amazing how you So I praise God that over the 25 plus years or more that we have been knowing each other, amen, we have been stuck like glue to each other, yeah. amen. One thing about our ministries, amen, he know, I'm like Ken Nugent, just one call, that's all. <laughs> Amen. If he needs a check, all he has to do is ask. Now, I might have to go pick up cans, but that's be all right. And I'm going to make sure I support my friend. Amen. And then our children love each other. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's, that's awesome today. And now when I see little C and Christian and, and Kate and uh, Carmen, amen, they, it's, it's amazing to know that they were just, you know, knee high to a tadpole and now, well, uh, in college or college graduates, man, and God is blessing their lives, amen, and I thank God, amen, for a relationship, so I encourage anybody, amen, if you find some true friends, stick with them, amen, amen. God bless you, amen. and it's no secret, amen, both of our ministries are extremely blessed, I praise God, and I send you greetings, amen, from St. Mark Avenue Church, amen, amen. there at 3605. Campbellton Road, amen, Atlanta, Georgia. Pray much for me because I'm in a hotbed of ministry. Amen. Craig Oliver's right down the street. Uh, uh, Paul Martin is just over the hill. Yeah. Timothy Fleming is just over on, this other, on the other side of Greenbrier. Then you got Ben Hill United Methodist Church right behind me. But I guarantee you, before you see any one of them, as soon as you get off the interstate, you see St. Mark in the church. So I pray God. I got the first shot. Amen. I praise God. I praise God for all my, amen, AME uh, co-laborers tonight. I see Pastor Davis. I see uh, uh, Pastor Willis. Who else am I missing? Am I missing anybody? Am I? Amen. But I want you to know I see you tonight. Praise God for all of you. You've been a special you. But tonight, my beloved brothers and sisters, they told me it was, amen, a, a, a man's revival, a men's revival. Am I correct? Let the Lord's name be praised. Now, I'm Mike, I know how to shift gears sometimes. Amen. Amen. I praise God. That it's shifted sometimes, amen. We try to make it inclusive. So ladies, don't be offended, but I mean, get on the ship and we'll go home together. Amen. <laughs> amen. If you with me tonight, amen, let us go to Psalm number 103. So good to see my classmate Sherry. Amen. And, and, and Mother Wild, so good to see y'all tonight. Amen. Psalm 103 and verses beginning at verse number 13. Psalm 103 beginning at verse number 13, and you will find these words recorded. It says, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, that's key. He remembers that we are dust. I gotta say that again. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. And he remembers that we are nothing but dust. Well, stop right there, my beloved brothers and sisters. Talk a little while tonight, amen. Just be a man about it. Just be a man about it. Preach me, God, in Jesus' name. Just be a man about it. Hallelujah. I mean, from some years ago, my beloved brother and sister, there was this wonderful song, amen, R&B song by uh, Tony Braxton, oh, yeah. <laughs> where she just wanted, amen, her man to just be a man about it. Yeah. Amen. I want you to know that it's tripendicular how this hooks with the text, All right. because, amen, Tony Braxton had an opportunity to have this guy, uh, this boo that she was dating at the time, Man, this brother was a feeling like they should continue on in their relationship. And however, Tony, amen, just wanted him to be straight up with her, amen, about, amen, how he felt, amen. And then it got, as the conversation goes on in the song, amen, as she noticed that it seemed like a cop-out for how the brother wanted to leave her, uh, Tony just tells him to be a man about it. Amen. Man, you know, and after the song goes on, the brother explains to her that his mama told him that she was not the one for him. Well. And Tony, just like many of you sisters out there tonight, amen, would do the same thing, amen, that Tony did. He said, well, you need to go home and be with your mama. 
Amen, amen. I think it was a song by Stokely and amen. And uh, what's the young lady's name, amen? Some years ago she said, you're not my daddy, you're my man. <laughs> In other words, amen, because you have a connection with your parents. Amen. You have to understand, even though we hope that we are raised in the fear and admonition of the Lord, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. But, amen, once, amen, they are raised to a level of maturity, then there has to be a spiritual, amen, disconnect. Because, amen, your mama and your daddy can't tell you who to love. I wish I had some help in here tonight. Y'all kind of kind of call on me tonight because too many times uh, we are trying our best to form and draw this portrait of the person that we choose, amen, uh, because of what our mama and daddy said, but amen, how many of you know most of us in here tonight that are married, you didn't marry the person that your mama and daddy suggested that you have, amen, and the truth be told, if your boo was like your daddy, and, uh, amen, you really wouldn't even be married tonight. I wish I could talk to y'all tonight. I'm just a country boy from a country hill. But I want you to know, my beloved brothers, and just be a man about it. And here, amen, Tony Braxton tells the book, you ain't got to lie, you ain't got to put it on your mama, you ain't got to put it on nobody else, but this responsibility to leave me is a choice that you got to live with for yourself. Just be a man about it. I want you to know tonight, my beloved brother and sister, amen, I come to talk to the brothers tonight, amen, but to also be inclusive of the ladies in the house, and because we have to understand the key word in Psalm 103, 13 and 14, is this word called compassion. Now, I got, before I get to compassion, amen, I got to talk, amen, that the root word in compassion is passion. And too many people, amen, confuse passion with compassion. And that's why some of us brothers have trouble raising our children or sticking with the lady who, amen, bore our children. Uh, passion, my beloved brothers and sisters, is because it's a feeling. You know that hotness that you get all over. You have a sick spell when you're in love. You know, you can't eat, you can't sleep, amen, because you're in love with somebody. Somebody shout, that's passion. Uh, passion is when you, amen, uh, don't care if this credit score is tore up from the floor up, amen, but you're living anyway, that's passion. Uh, can talk to me somebody, passion is when uh, you find persons, amen, you know that they won't work in a pie factory, but they're still living with you, rent free, won't take no water bill, no gas bill, that's passion. Come, come on, somebody shout passion. Uh, passion is because he looks good, amen, uh, amen, but really he's a solid as joker in the block. Uh, you know, that's passion, and, uh, and I'm mighty afraid some women in here tonight have uh, Amen. Have been heartbroken because uh, you looked on the outside and you never really checked God's credentials uh, for the person on the inside. Uh, that's why the Bible said God uh, does not look a man at man like uh, we do. Amen. Uh, amen. God looks on the inside, but while everybody else is checking out your shoes and my pants, amen, and my gold, my jewelry, my rings, and how fine I am, that does not matter with God. God is looking at your heart and your soul to see if he can use you. And before I go any further tonight, is there anybody in here tonight uh, so you know what, I may not be 36, 24, 36, but I thank God that when God calls my name, he can use me. And I'm so glad tonight that him using me is not identified by my thinking, but it's identified by my faith. Oh, people can have a little fun here tonight. Oh, yes, we haven't been in a revival in a while. And here, amen, we find ourselves understanding the difference between passion and compassion. And like I said, passion is this uh, sensual thing. And I want you to know tonight, uh, amen, uh, there are a few senses that God gave us. 
Uh, amen. And I, I want you to know God gave them to us. Uh, but then, amen, it seems like the Bible contradicts itself. Uh, because the Bible says, in the flesh uh, dwelleth no good thing. Uh, can I get a witness tonight? Uh, and when he says, amen, in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. Uh, I have a problem sometimes. I have to wrestle with God. Uh, and so, uh, God, uh, you say, in the flesh dwelleth good, no good thing. Uh, flesh and blood can't even enter the kingdom. But then you gave me sight, you gave me vision, you gave me taste, you gave me smell, you gave me all these things where I can identify with reality. But yet and still you're saying those things are just why you're on the this side. But on the other side, you ain't got to worry about how you feel because everything is going to be all right. And I stop by to tell somebody tonight who may be broken hearted, amen, bit on your feet. You feel it all melancholy in some kind of way. Get out your feelings and praise God. Now won't you watch God see and make a way out of no You talking about passion tonight and too often times we dwell on how we feel. God said it ain't how you feel. It's about what you believe. And I don't know about any man tonight. I need God to help me. Amen. Because sometimes when I'm baby in 430 and my mind is not right and it looks like the harder I try the more hell I catch. Can I by myself tonight? Look like every time I pay off Peter, here comes Paul. And if it ain't Paul, here comes Jeremiah. If it ain't Jeremiah, it's one of the other prophets. It looks like the better I get, God blesses me, the more enemies that I have. Anybody in here like me, you got folk mad at you because God woke you up this morning. You got folk that wish that they were on program on your obituary. But God said, no, child, just be faithful to me. And I watch you bury them and still them bury in you. Oh, I wish I had some help in here tonight. Somebody shout passion. Now, I want you to know, amen, it takes a little passion. It takes a little passion, Jen, in order to serve God. Can I get a witness here? Because you can't build the ministry unless you got a passion for it. You can't sing on the praise team unless God is staring in your heart. I thank God for passion. But the here in the text, somebody shout compassion. And what compassion is, is not only does God, amen, amen, not only does God want you to have a feeling for what he puts you through, but then he also, amen, wants to get in there with you. Oh, I wish I had some help tonight. Because what compassion says, that if you are suffering, God said, I'm going to let you suffer, but I ain't going to let you suffer by yourself. So I'm here to tell somebody tonight, got your head down in the locks of your shoulders. I don't feel sorry for you tonight, because if you're a child of God, you ought to know that he walks with you, and he talks with you, and he tells you that you are his own. Is there anybody in here tonight? So neighbor, I'm not worried about the Negro that's sitting next to me. Because if they move, God is right there with me. So somebody shout me. So here in the text tonight, I feel like preaching. The text says that this is God's, amen, an illustration to us. And he says here, as a father has compassion for his children. And let me tell every daddy in here, every baby daddy that's in this house tonight, God expects you to first of all have responsibility. Can I get away? In Genesis, in the beginning, he gave Adam a responsibility. He tells him, whatever you see, you put the name on it, and it shall be whatever you call it. That's why some people right now can't stay at home, don't want to pay child support, don't want to ever see their children, go to the ball games, never be there when they get baptized, or any of that stuff, because you have forgotten your responsibility. God tells Adam, 
everything in the garden. I made it, but you gonna leave it. Ain't that how God is? He gave you a life. He gave you a choice. And he told you, now that I've given you the choice, you got to put your name on it. And that's why I tell Negroes, you got to stop claiming somebody else's blessing and dig your own way. Can I get a witness here? Pastor Dumas, if you had a waiting on other folks, especially the presiding elders, to promote you and legitimate you, you still go across the train tracks scratching your head of how you're going to make it. But when God gives you choice, somebody shot choice. God will teach you how to do just like Jethro on the belly of Hill business. When he took a advice and the man tells him, Jethro, Negro, you didn't struck gold. Walk from man and let's go to Beverly Hills. Is there anybody in here tonight that got a Beverly Hills kind of thing? So I may be in the bottom of the barrel, but my God, He tells me that my trouble don't last always. Look at somebody beside you and say, neighbor, you're the good look tonight because this is the voice that you're going to see me higher ground. That is coming. Help us on the way. Somebody shot me. Look at him again and say, neighbor, Oh, yeah. 
responsibility. But amen, compassion makes you proactive instead of reactive. Can I get a witness here? Most don't want to react after something has happened. But can I tell you what proactive does? Proactive does. I'm not going to wait till the storm comes for me to grab a umbrella. I'm not going to wait till I get sick in my body to try to stay healthy. I'm not going to wait. Why did it not on me to be a living truth? But if you stay ahead of the game, you'll always be on top. Look at your name. It's a man of God. Be proactive instead of reactive. And if you praise him in advance, you'll always show
hog and wondered why the baby had stopped crying. To her surprise, she didn't know, but daddy had showed up. And I'm going to tell somebody tonight, whoever, amen, is setting a plot for you, let them plot. But sooner or later, daddy is going to show up. So she come down the hall. She said, Daddy, put the baby back in the baby pen. You know, I'm trying to teach him that he can't always have his way. And you know how we are. We try to abide by somebody else's rules. That's why sometimes you try to, amen, abide by other folks' rules. But when you know who your help come from, you don't pay attention all the time to the rules. The Bible says the one who goes and abides by law is, a, is subject to sin and to death. But the Bible says that those who serve God and the Spirit, they are set free. Can I get a witness there? So he puts the baby back in the baby pen. She goes back down the hall. Girls are have some more. And the baby started reaching for daddy again. And the daddy broke him over the room, reached in the baby pen, and picked the baby up, and the baby stopped crying. The girl was spirits. She come back down the hall, said, look at here, put the baby back in the baby pen. I gotta teach them that they can't always have their way. And you know how granddaddy is. Don't want to get the fussing with the daughter. Put the baby back in the baby pen. She turned around, went back down the hall, started curling her hair all over again. But this time, she had the baby stop crying again. And she threw the curling irons on the sink. I'm going to go down there and tell my daddy that if he can't abide by my rules, he got to leave. I'm going to have to teach him that the baby can't have his way, even though daddy has showed up. So she walked down the hall, about to cuss her daddy out. But to her surprise, this time, daddy didn't pick the baby up, but he got in the baby pen with the baby. And the woman said, I can't say nothing, daddy. You beat me at my own rules. And daddy said, that's how God is.
God allowed you to participate in something. I tell everybody, in order to be delivered, God can give you the word, but you have to reciprocate that word. Right. Mm -hmm. And when the word went forth tonight, and when God told you to step out of some stuff, mm -hmm. that was literally your altar call right there. Right. That, that, that was your breakthrough right there because what you did, oh my God. You don't understand, let me break it down to you. When, when, when Peter said, bid me to come, And all he did was tell him to walk. Yes. Yes. And he walked an impossible path yes. to get what God had in store for him. Yes. And when you stepped over some stuff tonight, yes. you stepped over some hurdles tonight, yes. you stepped over some sickness tonight. Yes. And what has to happen is when you understand the biblical properties and principles of stepping over stuff, yes. not only do you step over, but I'm finna blow my own mind, but you step on some stuff. <laughs> And that means that the enemy is now under your, that which hindered you is now under you. Yes. You ought to give God praise right there for your ship right now. Look at your neighbor and say, that's a ship in my life right there. Y'all believe it right now? Y'all over. Oh, that's somebody who needs a ship. Yes. That's some stuff that's been holding you up and you needed to walk it out. Yes. And God allowed you to tell you tonight that when you see some stuff, see, we can tell mountains to be moved. But there's some stuff we got to step over. There's some stuff we got to walk on. And we got to walk on the Lord's word to believe God. Whatever he says, we got to do just that. Come on and give God a hand of praise. Amen. Everybody, we're not going to prolong long time. But let me tell y'all something. When we get words like we've had last night and tonight. Let me tell y'all something. I ain't been to mess that up. I'm not going to mess that up. Amen. Everybody standing all over the house. Everybody's standing all over the house. We're asking you right now, you do know we're in revival. We're asking you to sow a seed tonight. We're asking you to sow a seed tonight. And those who are joining us by way of Facebook, you can do it four ways. You can do it by Tidally, Givelify, PayPal, or Vimo. You can also mail it to us at P.O. Box 1552, Thompson, Georgia, 30286. But on tonight, I want you to sow a seed on tonight. Don't allow this word to go void. Boy. Tonight, also, too, while we are standing and while you're preparing for your seeds tonight, if there's somebody here tonight that don't know the Lord for themselves, if you don't know the Lord tonight, don't let this night go by without you knowing the Lord. I tell everybody that when we were growing up, when we were growing up, there were times in our lives where we would say, today or tomorrow is not promised to you, but the moment is not promised to you. I got a text even before I walked out that, that a loved one just lost somebody else. I, I want y'all to know that death is running rampant in our land. But the help in a death situation is that they know the Lord for themselves. Don't let this moment go by that if you don't know the Lord that you don't meet him tonight. If there's somebody here who need a covering over your life and say, I, I, I like this strong well thing. We've been dating for a while. I, I want to date. I want to I wanna make our, our, our date and take it to another level. I want to be a part of the strong well. If that's you, if that's you, you can step out by faith. If that's you on Facebook, you can step out by faith. You can do it right now if there's anyone tonight. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. So if you have your seeds tonight, if you have your seeds, holding your seeds up high. And what we will do on your way out, if you have your card, you can swipe your card on the way out and you can give it in the basket. So what we do here at Stonewell, we, we don't just have an offering time. We know what we're supposed to do for the Lord. And if you love something, you're going to do what you're supposed to do. You're going to do your responsibility. And so we just ask you to be responsible as you walk out the door to pay your offering. So we're going to pray over that. Then we're going to ask Pastor Dickie to come up and give us the benediction. Most gracious and awesome God, as we come before you tonight, God, these are our seeds tonight that we're sowing in this anointed soil called stone. But not only the soil of stone well, but revival soil tonight. We speak that this is a revival seed right now, God. That we speak that it's going to take root, God. And it's going to produce a harvest that will be exceedingly abundant above everything that we ask, hope, and think, God. We believe so much that it shall be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And every heart and every mind said, amen. amen. Now, if you believe it, reach up and grab it. Put it across your chest and claim it. Put your hands together and thank God for it. Amen.
the only way I can do that. But Pastor Diddy, would you come? Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the man of God on tonight. Amen. get our attention. And don't, you're no different than the people in the Bible, but the God sent his word as an example for what you shouldn't be or what he shouldn't have to do in order to get you to see that he is real. Do the best you can. Try to treat everybody right. And man, mind your own business. Mind your own business. You know how I'm finally, man, I'll be 55 in, in, in a couple of weeks. And you know how I feel good tonight? It's because I don't worry about other folks' stuff. I mind my own business. I love being at home. <laughs> and trust me, somebody said, you know so and so and so and so You for real. And guess what? The life would be so much. Your blood pressure and everything. Amen. You don't have to retire to know how to cheat. Let the Lord have you pray. But just know I'm praying for you, Stormwell. What you all are doing, guess what? You are making an impression on the kingdom. And God is blessing you for it. Hang in there. Hang with your pastor. He is a visionary. The Bible says without a vision, people perish. I don't want to perish in this city. Amen. So I praise God. Thank you. Pastor Jones, let us pray as we get ready to leave this place tonight. God, we thank you for everything that we have witnessed tonight. Every song that has been sang, every chord that has been played, every temple on the drums, God, every prayer that was prayed, every person under the sound of my voice. God, let us now take responsibility for the choices that God gives us and the choice God gives us to make. And let us not just be reactive, wait until something happens, but let us be proactive. Oh, like the Bible says, consider the end you slow. Even out of season, he works so that when the winter time comes, he has everything that he needs. So God, teach us how to be proactive in our praise and our worship so that God, when trouble comes in our life, and Jesus declared that we would have trouble, but let us have a storehouse of faith that we can leave even when we don't see God in our situation. But God, as we leave this place tonight, we realize there's a dangerous world out there. Racism, COVID, hatred, disobedience, drugs, gangs, violence, everything is happening. But God, I pray now your protection tonight is on the wheels and the vehicles all the way to their destination. And when they get there, God, let them say, God, I thank you that I'm back the same day I left. And now, God, for every man, I pray in the name of Jesus that we just be men about it. That we just be men about the life that God, amen, has chosen for us. Do the best we can. And even when life looks hard and difficult, we don't have to worry that the Lord is in the baby pen of life with us to see us through. Now may the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, be rest rule and abide with these dying people, henceforth, now, and forever. And the people of God said, amen, 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 amen. and amen.